Hey, I hope you're doing well today. And today I have a really exciting video for you. So today I've actually built an agentic spider multi-agent workflow all in N8N. And I'm going to show you how it works. I'll go through a little demo with you as well and how I build it out. Let's get into it. All right, so it might be a little bit confusing when you're looking at this and you're wondering what the hell is going on here. Nothing is connected apart from these, uh, but nothing connects to each other, right? Now, the reason why that is, is because we're actually triggering everything here by a webhook. Okay, so think about it like a webhook is receiving a signal and then it's being alerted. Hey, you know, you receive this now do your job execute. Okay, and that is actually being sent by these HTTP requests here. Okay, so they're actually like sending a signal and then the webhook is picking it up and then boom, it starts its job. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, I'll just give you a little demo as well. So we'll use the normal chat input. That's just N N8N. Of course, you can use Telegram, you could use WhatsApp, whatever the hell you want, to be honest with you. And we're gonna put in something a little bit crazy as well. So I've got one here already ready to go. Now, this is just a um, kind of like a travel itinerary for Bali, but it's very, it's very in-depth and it requires a lot of things. So I thought it'd be a good thing to test. And we'll just copy that, bring it back over here, paste that right in and press send. So the first thing you'll notice here as well is that it's going to go through the motion okay and then it just stops here and it says node executed successfully and then it just kind of stops and that's it like you don't see anything else running now the reason why that is is because everything is being triggered via the webhooks okay so you don't actually see those live uh, as your you know you would normally see your automations but if we jump over to executions we start to see all of these things running up here which are you know loaded for me so we can see the first one was this one right here, most likely at 149. Yep. So this one started off. So that was the starter agent. Okay. And then it sent uh, the HTTP post request here, sent it over to what I'm going to say is the planner agent. Okay. So it's like speaking now to the planner agent. There we go. Now the planner agent received that. And then we can see right here, the agent was a starter agent. Uh, the output from the starter agent as well, okay? And also, most importantly as well, well, maybe not most importantly, but an important factor here is the session ID is also being sent. Now, the reason why that's important is because now we have this and all of these agents connected to a memory right here. So they're all seeing the conversations from the previous agents. They're seeing what I'm saying, everything, okay? So they're all connected to the same memory. So if I open that up, you can see right here, this is also green alerting that it's connected. Um, that same session ID is being pushed through all the agents. So they're seeing the context and the conversations from all the previous agents before it uh, received it, okay? So we'll jump back over here and we'll go to, so that was planned. Okay, let's go to the researcher one now. And if we jump to the researcher one, we can see right here, the researcher one then received the query from the planner. Okay, so we can actually just see it right here as well. And it said, main goal, create a comprehensive seven day family itinerary for Bali that includes, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so received all the information here and then started to perform the steps. Now that is actually all done as well, but I'll just show you a little bit more. And we can see here the researcher has performed seven researches or seven searches. We open this up and we can see here it's queried cultural experiences for children, Bali, educational engagement levels. And, you know, you'll have another six more, right? Now, that's then getting all that information, live information from the internet. It's then being sent over to a writer who's going to write everything and then to a formatter who's going to format everything and then going to a validator just to make sure that everything that I require, that I requested, is also within that last and final output. And if it's all good, then it sends it. But if it's not good, it's gonna be like, hey, you're missing this information. And it's gonna come back, let's say, to the researcher to research and get that information. The researcher said, okay, well, I've got that information now, let's hand it over to the writer. The writer's like, okay, that's all good. Let's hand it over to the formatter now. So they can go back and forth. It's not just down the line, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? It could be A, it could be C next, and then from C to Z, and then Z to B, okay? It's all up to the agents and 
well, yeah, your prompts and how you set up everything as well. But that's how it can work with agentic systems. So let's look at the actual result now. So I'll just refresh this and we'll see the kind of results that we're getting here. So we do have a family, Bali family itinerary, seven day adventure. Okay, I won't go through each and every little thing that it's given you here, but I can see straight away that it is very in depth. Okay, it's very long, it's very in depth, which is exactly how it should be, because as we can see here, we do have day seven, day six, day five, you know, all the way up to one. And then we have flight transfer details from Cairns to Dempasa, and Cairns is my city. Uh, high season prices, shoulder season, never heard anyone say that, but fair enough. And then low season as well. And then we just have restaurant dining options as well. Uh, I also mentioned that I wanted Italian restaurants and seafood restaurants, so we have that here as well. And since there was kids coming, it's now given everything for the kids. Rainy season, contingency plans, cultural and educational experience for children, things like that. Uh, and then budget summaries as well, okay? And then we have all that. So that's all done. But as you can see, that's a, that's a really, really long um, email as well. And it's formatted really, really nicely. So let's jump back over here. And I'm gonna show you now how this kind of works, right? We'll use, which example? We'll use this one right here. So this is the planner right here, okay? So this is the one I showed you just before. But how this works and why this is the setup the way it's set up, okay? Oh, look at that. Someone's just joined the school community. Welcome, Matthew Puico. Welcome, mate. Anyway, so the way this all works, right, is we have a webhook here. Uh, that webhook was triggered via the starter agent, as we can see right here, with this output and this session ID. Now, if we move it across to this edit field set node right here, what I'm pulling across here to the agent so that it can pick it up and everything is just the session ID, okay, and the output. So I've just put that in here and then we can see it right here. So now we know that this agent here is also connected to this session ID, meaning it's using the same uh, memory node across all the agents so that they can also see all the messages going back and forth between the other agents as well, okay? So it's not just like, there's one node and it just has memory, you know, for itself. Okay. Now it's actually understanding and like being able to see the conversations from prior agents as well, which is really important because now it knows what's going on, you know, previously. So I'll move over to the next one. Now the planner agent here. So that output from the starter agent. Okay. I've just put that as the prompt. So the user message, which is right here. And then we just have the system message, which is just a system message for the planner and what it should do. And I'll give you a little look on that as well. So it is, you know, very, very simple. And the way I've made it is just like this. So I've said, you're a planner responsible for breaking complex tasks into clear steps, think step by step. Um, and then I just have the input, which is just the, the prompt. Okay, identify the main goal, two to four logical subtasks and determine if research is needed before proceeding. Now we have the output options, route to research if facts are needed or route to writer if ready for content creation. Okay. And then we just have output format just as, um, you know, how to output everything as well. Okay. And adding the, the, the date, you know, the current date and time is very important as well, because then it's going to start, you know, saying like things that are back in like 2023 and we don't need that. So that then goes through. And I was having trouble with the output parser, which is this right here. Okay. And normally you just, you know, you connect up a little output parser and you put everything, but I don't know, like I was having trouble with it, not even in this workflow right here, but with several. Okay. And I don't know if NADN has made like an update or something, but it just was uh, erroring out all the time. I've triple checked, quadruple checked, you know, I checked everything. I just couldn't get it working. So what I did was I just made my own output parser just with the code known, okay? So we got this right here. And then of course, now I'm just getting output, webhook, and then agent, okay? So you'll see very importantly here, okay? It's this right here, the webhook research. Now this is then being delivered over to the HTTP request, right? 
So if we look at the HTTP request here, that actual webhook, this right here, okay, and this value right here, which is research, is then becoming a dynamic expression, okay, at the end of the URL, which is just, you know, my webhook URL, okay? So that then becomes a dynamic expression so that any time it changes. So if it, if it said, oh, we don't need research, we can just write this and then it'll type in, you know, it'll show writer here. And then this won't lead to the research. This will actually lead to the writer, okay? Or it could lead here or there or whatever the task is, okay? So that's, that's how everything is kind of being routed around between all the different agents and everything. Now the session ID, for the memory node, okay? We can see it right here. So I'm just pulling that through as well. And I'm just using the body parameters, the JSON body parameters here. And I'm just saying session ID and just pu pulling in the expression straight into the value here so that the next agent, which would be the research agent, would also receive that session ID, will then also have access to the memory node and then be, you know, getting access to all the history and the messages and the conversations, the outputs, and everything that's happening during this whole process of it running, okay? And then we just have the value, so this is nothing special, it's just telling the next agent who sent this, which is the planner agent, and then it's just the output, which is just the output from this agent right here, which is this right here, okay? So we're sending that over to the researcher as well. Now, the researcher then would receive that, right? which is right here and the re and the researcher receives it right so we can see it right here the research is being triggered by the uh the planner agent okay via webhook and we can see this one being triggered and the same thing so the agent that sent the trigger the http request was the planner agent and we can see its output as well and we also have that session id right here this memory right here right if we actually look at it this was my original query okay so this is the message that I actually sent initially. Okay, and then it was picked up by the starter agent. The starter agent output this and it sent it to the planner agent. And we can come down a bit and that's just like a text version of it. And then the planner agent made that plan and everything. So we see that as well. And then it says here that hence research is necessary before proceeding. And it goes to webhook research, which then is this agent right here. And this is from the agent planner, okay? And then we can see its message is also being received. And then this actual agent, the research agent is now doing it, performing its research, everything like that. And it's made that right there. So what's happening now is that those other agents and every agent here is also seeing the memory and seeing the conversation history and then understanding what the hell is going on here from agent number one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Even understanding my initial user query. Now that's very important because when we come down later on, let's say I go to the validator now, okay? And the validator will be the one checking everything to make sure it's based on, you know, everything that I requested is there, okay? And if it's not there, it's gonna be like, hey, this is not there, go and research this and you've got to get this, right? And then, you know, oh, now, the markdown formatting is incorrect or something like that send it back to the formatter okay so this is what the validator is doing now obviously hopefully it gets it right the first time but this is what a validator would do so if i jump down here now open up the validator and it's received this okay so it gets this long bloody thing right here and we can see right here the output and it says the itinerary is factually detailed, comprehensive, clearly formatted in Markdown with proper headings and structure and presents all requested aspects of the trip in a clear and readable manner. No issues were identified. And then it just says webhook none, meaning that it doesn't want to send it anywhere else because now we're done, right? Send it to me now via email. And this is by the agent validator. So this is how I'm actually receiving it at the end. Because now when it says, hey, everything's good, everything's clear, we don't need to send it any, anywhere else. You know, now we can just say none, okay, for the web book and send it directly to my email. But for instance, if there was something wrong, we can see right here, I have an if node. So within this if node, I've just put in the web book expression. And if it's equal to none, then send it to my email. But if it's other than none, then 
it's going to route down here to another HTTP request. And then of course, it'll use the expression here, the dynamic expression. And based on what the problem is and based on what's missing and what's required, it'll route it then to the actual agent that, you know, does that task. Now you might be wondering like, okay, but what, what, why are you doing all this anyway? Well, the thing is, is that agentic agents are, you know, the next level. Okay. So that's where I want to head. That's where you should be heading as well. Okay. For tool calling agents, like what we currently have within N8N, beautiful, love them, right? We can do automations and we can go through all the steps and they can call their little tools, they're like their little apps and everything and perform actions and, and do things for us. But Agentic is like, they can learn and improve over time. They, they, they don't require human intervention all the time, okay? They can self-learn and they can always improve. And if they make a mistake, let's say yesterday, they know that now and won't make the mistake again tomorrow, okay? And that's not like always a requirement for us to be saying, oh, you made this mistake yesterday, don't do that. This is what, I'm, what I mean. They're more sentient in a way. They're more alive. And this is what makes them very interesting and very, very powerful if you really understand the concept of agentic agents. You know, I've, I just thought it was an interesting little thing and you know, I thought I'd make a video about it. It is a very kind of complex thing, but kind of not in a way as well. Once you connect all the dots and you know, you get all the web hooks right and you get all the system messages right. And well, yeah, it kind of is a little bit complex. I want to lie. That's going to be the end of the video guys. So I hope you learned something new anyway. I hope it's some new information anyway, because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I'll, obviously I will have it over my school community as well. So if you do want to pick up the template or you just want to come have a chat, see how things are going, make some new friends. We're pretty active over here. So I'm actually really happy with how things are going as well. A um, lot of great people, a lot of smart people as well. So it's not just like, you know, it's all just uh, beginners or it's all just advanced people. It's a mixture, but we have a lot of fantastic people here. Very thankful that they've all, you know, here with me on the journey as well. But if I don't see you there, no problem at all. I'll see you in the next one.